Okay, so in this video I'm going to have a quick look through, a very quick look through the diversity of proteins and the levels of protein structure which are required in order to produce that. So, let's just consider, um, hormones are uh, proteins, enzymes are proteins, antibodies are proteins and carrier molecules both across uh, membranes and also around the body, so for instance haemoglobin, um, are all proteins. Proteins are an incredibly diverse group functionally. They do lots and lots of different things. How they achieve the different things that they do is due to their difference in shapes. But they are all polymers and they are all have different levels of protein structure. Now, first level of protein structure that you possess is the primary structure. And the primary structure is then twisted into a regular secondary structure, which is then further distorted into a third level of structure known as tertiary structure. And if you have more than one polypeptide chain, then you possess a quaternary structure. Right, another chat here about primary structure. So if we look at a single amino acid, that amino acid, remember, has an amine group, an R group, and a carboxyl group here. Now the R group can be one of 20, so it can be as simple as a hydrogen, which would make it glycine, or can be far more complex. Now if we put two amino acids alongside each other, then these two amino acids can form a peptide bond, and the peptide bond is formed at a diagonal and eliminates H, H and O, which gives us water. And the peptide bond is formed between the carbon and the nitrogen across there. So here I've shown a dipeptide which is formed between two uh, amino acids. It's formed between a glycine, which has got a hydrogen and an alanine here. And the peptide bond is this bit in the middle. So remember, primary structure is the order of amino acids in a polypeptide chain. Now, for instance, the um, alpha, alpha globin chain of haemoglobin has, I think, about 150 amino acids that are lined together in a particular order, which is dictated by your genes. Now, having got that order, that order, which is a sequence, is often compared to beads on a string, is then twisted into two secondary structures, which are regular arrangements. And the two secondary structures are an alpha helix or a beta sheet. And both of these structures can exist in the same molecule, and they're both stabilized by hydrogen bonds, which occur to stabilize them into these regular structures. So these are hydrogen bonds between small positive and small negative charges within the chain. Now, tertiary structure is the third level of structure, and this is caused by interactions between the 20 different R groups. Now, some of these R groups um, will become charged, and they will form um, attractions between each other, and these are obviously ionic bonds. Some of them will be nonpolar, and these will want to be not dissolved in water, so these will be hydrophobic, so they will be on the inside of a larger molecule, so they'll be away from the water. Some will be polar, so they will want to be on the outside because they are hydrophilic, and some which particularly have sulfur, so the cysteine um, amino acid, will form a covalent bond, that is a disulfide bond, so a covalent strong bond. Now this will twist the primary structure, which is the order, which will be turned and twisted into a secondary structure, so an alpha helix or a beta sheet. And then you take that secondary structure and you twist it further into giving you this tertiary structure, which is the result of the ionic bonds, the hydrophobic interactions, and the disulfide bonds. Now, this looks like an enormous irregular blob but 
it is a specific shape which is the resultant of all of the interactions between all of the R groups. Now, the comparison I give to my students is that if you imagine you took your entire class and you got them all to hold hands, which I know is a, is a traumatic thought of some of you, and they then floated three in three-dimensional space, over time they would form a three-dimensional blob which would be the resultant of all of the interactions between everybody. And it would be the most stable form. It wouldn't be the best for everybody, but it would be the most stable form. And that shape would be caused by the order in which those people were holding hands. So if we change the order, that is the primary structure, then the resultant shape that would form from the three-dimensional massive blob would be changed because the interactions between the R groups would be different, so the overall shape of the molecule would alter. Right. Last form of structure is quaternary structure. Now, quaternary structure is when there is more than one polypeptide chain. A classic example for this is of hemoglobin, and hemoglobin has an alpha chain and another alpha chain, and it also has a beta chain and another beta chain. So there are four chains held together. And then there are four heme groups. And these are non-protein parts of the protein. These are prosthetic groups. And they have at their center an iron, uh, iron at the center of each of these heme groups. And each of the ions can take, obviously, one oxygen. So here we have oxyhemoglobin, which has four oxygen molecules bound to this single hemoglobin molecule. The hemoglobin molecule has four chains, two alpha and two beta chains, has four heme groups. Those chains are have a tertiary structure which is held together by um, all of the bonds between the R groups, so ionic between you know hydrophobic interactions of the nonpolar and the polar R groups and the covalent bonds of the cysteine amino acids. Also, I forgot to mention there are hydrogen bonds which are in the tertiary structure. And these hydrogen bonds are also holding together and forming these bonds and then we, below that we have the secondary structure so if we thought this was one of our globin molecules say our alpha globin then actually this would be coiled up like that and there might be another bit that's coiled here so within the tertiary structure we see a level of the secondary structure and then obviously that secondary structure is built on a primary structure which is the sequence of amino acids. Okay, I hope that makes some sense. Uh, please subscribe or like or all of the other YouTube type behaviours. Thanks very much.